Hi, my name is John Miller, and in this lesson today, we'll be looking and working on country blues musicianship. What exactly do we mean by that? Well, I suspect that if you've bought this DVD, uh, maybe you've bought some others where you learn repertoire, you learn to play particular pieces, and certainly that's an important part of learning. But uh, just from my own experience teaching down through the years and at music camps, what I see sometimes is uh, folks who are comfortable playing a few pieces that they've learned, but don't really feel like they understand what you might say the language of the style how to just hear a song at a jam and join in, uh, kind of know where the song is going to go next. And that's really what this DVD is all about, sort of providing you with a framework for understanding the style of the country blues, recognizing the commonly used blues forms, and so on, so that when somebody says an eight bar blues, in fact, you know what it means. It conjures up a sound in your head. It's not just uh, words that don't mean anything to you. And so over the course of this lesson, we'll look at a number of topics that pertain to building skills in playing and understanding blues so that hopefully you'll get to the point where you may arrive in a playing situation, a party, a music camp, whatever it may be, and someone's playing a blues that you've never heard before, and you're nonetheless able to get out your instrument and just join right in. So that's what we'll be working on in this lesson. Okay, t let's take a look at the 12-bar blues now, the most commonly used uh, blues form, and I've got a a uh, whiteboard here where I've got the 12 bar blues indicated. Now, first of all, bar. What's a bar? Well, bar and measure are synonymous if you've ever heard the word measure used. And it's sort of the, the rate at which the rhythmic pulse repeats itself. And so a lot of times you'll have 4-4. Four, four. What that means is four beats for, per a measure and each beat is a quarter note. So for our purposes, let's just assume that we've got four beats per measure. So we've got 12 bars here, 12 measures, each one of which has four beats. Now, uh, what's interesting about this form is if you think of the most common uh, 12 bar blues lyric phrasing. The way that the lyrics are phrased, it's sometimes referred to as AAB. And I'm just going to write that here because I think that's important to, to know and remember. And with AAB phrasing, lyric phrasing, what happens is the person opens with a line, they repeat that line, and then they sing a tag line, the B line. And I'm going to do that right now, unaccompanied. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to line out the pulse as I do that, just by sort of tapping four beats in each measure. And we'll see something here, I think. So if I go a one, two, three, four. One, two, three. When my baby, she left me, she left me a mule to ride. When my baby, she left me, she left me a mule to ride. When the train left the station, God knows that black mule died. Okay. Now, one thing you may have noticed about the lyrics, each, each lyric phrase slightly preceded the measure. Those are called pickup notes. They precede the beat. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that lyric again, and I'm going to just put a circle above the
the bars are the place where the uh, where the lyrics fall. So once again, a one, two, three, four, a one, two, three. When my baby, she left me, she left me a mule to ride. When my baby, she left me, she left me a mule to ride. When the train left the station, God knows that black mule died. Okay, so the vocal really came in like on the fourth beat, like a pickup beat here, and it went right over these first two bars and kind of concluded on that first beat of this third measure in the first four bar phrase. Once again, it started on the fourth beat here, continued right across the first two bars in the second four bar phrase, and sort of ended on the uh, first beat of that third bar in that four bar phrase. And it did the same thing for the tagline. So what you can see then is that in this AAB phrasing scheme, you've got three four bar phrases, you're singing the same lyric over the first two four bar phrases, but all of the singing lives in the first two bars of each of the four bar phrases. So what's happening here in these in these uh, third and fourth measures of e each of these four bar phrases. Well, in those, uh, what you have going is what's sometimes referred to as call and response. And I've heard sometimes that people say, well, the role of the guitar in country blues is, you know, is to accompany the voice. Well, that's true to a certain extent, but it doesn't tell the whole story. Really, what you've got going is You've got the voice sort of laying out the line and the guitar or piano or harmonica, whatever it may be, doing an instrumental response. So it's like call and response, which really comes right out of uh, African musical traditions and also music in church. So you've ever heard of people talk about Playing fills, you say, you know, always, you know, this soloist is good. He plays fills. Well, what what's the space that's being filled? It's this space here. It's the portion of the form where the lyrics are not being sung, because anytime the singing's happening, that's the main thing that's happening, and so. This is, this is just sort of like, you might say, a level of musicianship or understanding the form is if in a jam you've got somebody singing and they're singing a 12-bar blues, you recognize the form, A, A, B. They sing the first line twice, then they sing uh, the, the B, the, the tagline. Just be aware that there's going to be a space following each line to do an instrumental fill, as opposed to sort of starting to solo at the beginning of the form and playing over top of the vocalist and just playing nonstop through the whole thing. It's a kind of back and forth between the vocal and the, and the uh, instrument. Now, where do one, four, and five come in here? Well, in the most common treatment of the 12-bar the blues, harmony or progression, the chords will work out this way. So when the first time you sing the, the A idea, it's over the one chord. And then you have fills over the one chord. 
Then when you return with that A idea, now it's sung over the four chord. And this is one of the cool things about the blues. It can be, and usually is, exactly the same melody, but it has a different color because it has the four chord back in it rather than the, the one chord. Then you follow that, you return to the one chord for the instrumental fills. Then you go to the five chord for the, for the tag line. And I have two bars of 5-7 here. A lot of times, what they'll also do is go from 5-7 to 4-7. And I'll, I'll uh, put that 4-7 in there parenthetically, because that's quite often done there in that second uh, bar of the f last four-bar phrase. And uh, let, me, let me do another uh, example, but this time what I'm going to do is to the guitar, and, uh, and I'll um, play some guitar and have the chords happening, and you'll see how uh, the chords fit, the phrasing fits, and so on. So I'm just going to set this whiteboard down for a second, grab the guitar, and I'm just going to play one verse of uh, Robert Johnson tune, Me and the Devil. Okay, so I'm playing in the key of A, and I'll go. A uh, one, two, three, four. Early one morning, when you knocked upon my door, early one morning, when you knocked upon. one verse. So let's see how that verse fits relative to that. So I'm in A here, as we said, up the neck, sort of fingering it like a D seventh. And so we got count myself in. One, two, three, four. And Early one morning, when you knocked upon my door. Now you see here, it's phrasing behind the beat. Instead of anticipating the beat, as in that first example I gave, if you see where it lives relative to the count, it's like one, two, three, four, one. Early one morning, when you knocked upon my door, As I repeat the line, where am I now? I'm in D7. I'm in the four chord. When you knocked upon my door. Okay, now I repeat to A7. It's like a little partial of a barred A7, just here. I said, hello, Satan. Okay, there's the beginning of the uh, third phrase, going to the five chord, to the four chord, four seven. I believe it's time to go. Okay, now one thing you may notice is that as it got to the end of that, that passed through the form, when it resolved back to the one at the end of the of the uh, the B uh, vocal phrase, you land in the one, but then you do this.
and you end the form on the five chord, E7, instead of, instead of in A, the one chord. Well, what that is called is a turnaround. And a turnaround, basically, instead of resolving the verse on the one chord, you make your way to the five chord to conclude the form because the song doesn't sound resolved until you finally end on the one chord. By going to the five chord, it's saying, we're going to keep going. So it shoots you back to the next verse. And so that's, that's the purpose of a turnaround. And we're going to have a whole segment devoted to turnarounds uh, later on in this lesson. But um, so let's uh, think a little bit more about this uh, phrasing for the 12 bar blues. So I'm going to set down the guitar again. And so you'll find that a really high percentage of blues uh, conform in the most basic way to this structure, this 12 bar AAB structure. And I should, should uh, say too that, you know, some of the earliest blues actually were 12 bar blues, but they, they were just AAA. They sang the same line three song, uh, same line three times. Excuse me, so that you have, for instance, a, a guy like Henry Thomas, a fellow named Henry. They call him Ragtime Texas Thomas. Recorded in the late twenties. Well, he he um, evidently was an older man when he first started recording, and and uh, so his style kind of was an older style. And he sang a song called Bull Deuce Blues, and he starts off and he says says, I'm going away, baby, and it won't be long. I'm going away, baby, and it won't be long. I'm going away, baby, and it won't be long. And so you can see, he, just is, he does his A idea three times. And, um, you know, it's not nearly as common as the AAB, but it is something that you encounter from time to time. Now, not all 12-bar blues are AAB or even AAA blues. There's also another kind of 12-bar blues that's called, I call it a chorus blues, for lack of a better term. And what I'm going to do is take a moment and erase where I showed these vocal occurring and the AAB and just label this chorus blues uh, because it phrases differently. So I'll just take a moment to do that.